Yo, what's going on guys? It is Tom and welcome back to a brand new video and a brand new episode of my MotoGP 17 Rider Career Mode. And we're here for a Moto3 debut for the Aspar team. And we're going to be racing around Qatar today. And uh, based off of your feedback, guys, in the first few episodes, I'm going to be extending the race length from three laps. I think I'm going to probably extend it to five. And also, in terms of the video length, I'm going to try and maybe target for 20 minute videos, maybe 25, depending on how each race goes. So, I'm um, hoping you guys do look forward to that. And if you are, then give it a big thumbs up straight off the bat. But we're going to jump right into the first race of the season for the Moto3 Championship in Qatar. Okay, so here we are for our first ever qualifying for the Aspar team. Look at this brand new garage. And these are also a different style of bike to the Red Bull Rookies Cup, I believe. I believe these are slightly bigger, if I'm not mistaken. Or they've got a bit more power to them. Um, I'd be very surprised if they're exactly the same. So, um, either way, a bit of a step up in performance. I think these are the sort of bikes that we came for. So, hopefully, we can have a good performance. And uh, fingers crossed, it all goes well. So, we're going to jump straight into qualifying and see how this bike performs. Okay, so the first lap is in the books. Nothing spectacular. I'm going to come across the line in a moment, but I'm 1.8 off the pace. This bike sounds uh, a bit odd. Doesn't sound particularly incredible compared to some of the Moto3 bikes, but nevertheless, across the line, 2.7 off the pace. So we're going to try and uh, find some pace. I was fastest in the first sector, so that's where I know I'm strong and that's where my bike performs. So we've got to try and improve performance elsewhere across the lap. So let's see where we can find a bit of time here. Okay, this time it's gone pretty well. Only two tenths off the pace in the third sector. Danilo this time making a move on my inside once again here. This time I'm going to get better traction than him. Here he comes. He's going to try and make a move on me here down the pit straight. My bike isn't the best. So you can see he's got a bit more power on his bike as he powers past me in a straight line. Here we go then. Across the line. A little bit of contact. I'm trying to bump draft him. And we're now six tenths off the pace. So we're slowly getting there. I'm going to try one more time here. Try and improve into the first corner. Okay, this could be the one I'm fastest in all three sectors. I'm currently th four tenths up now as we go onto the pitch straight for the final time. This will be my last lap because I don't feel like I've got a lot more to get out of the bike. Uh, I feel like I'm making mistakes also. But here we go, four tenths up. We're going to try my one count. Here we go, across the line. Can it be a pole position in our first race in Moto3? Yes, it is. By two and a half tenths, we pull it off. We pull one out of the bag and it's first place around Qatar. So not too shabby in our first qualifying in Moto3, they're getting first place in qualifying. Obviously, it's still four more minutes to go, so we don't know what could happen. But I really nailed that lap. Every single corner was absolutely perfect. And I don't think I'm going to sort of find that time anymore. Because that was just a perfect lap in every in every sense of the word. So, there we go. Pole position confirmed. So, not too bad. In our first race, getting pole position in Moto3. So, not too shabby there by about two and a half tenths. So, there we go. Good lap to round things off. And uh, hopefully, we can have an even better race on Sunday. So, here we go. We're going to jump into the race. And fingers crossed, we can try and follow up this brilliant qualifying result. Right. Here we go. It's race day on the Sunday. Pole position for the first race to kick things off. And uh, this could be get pretty tense and pretty exciting so uh i'm really looking forward to it. hopefully you guys are looking forward to it as well uh hopefully guys if you are enjoying the video so far then leave a thumbs up on the video but um yeah let's just go for it and see what happens so without further ado let's jump right into our first race right then here we go the first race of the 2017 season for red lights and it's going to be lights out and away we go for the new season of moto 3 in 2017 trying to go a little bit across there try and cut off me and I believe that's um, maybe Belega, I think it might be, in the VR46 Sky Team. But into the first corner for the first time this race. Important to not let the pack form and get away up front. We need to try and stick with the pack. And also the higher up the field the better because we need to be stick with these guys and not let them get into their own rhythm. So nice little sort of switch back there through turn two. Going to get a good one up the inside of three now. Hopefully into third place. There we go. Nice move there. Back up into P3. Nice little bit of overtaking action as Mir goes for a move up the inside of Belega. A little bit of contact between the two of them. I'm just going to try and slide up the inside of them and retake the lead. Also now Martin making a move. Mir also making a move back up my inside. So far so good. Nice and aggressive start here from us. We just got to keep this going. Martin takes the lead of the race. Just got to try and keep it going for a second section. I've got Belega I believe on the Sky team. Now back up my inside but we make the move. Holding it around the outside beautifully there. And we're still in P2. We need to try and stick with Martin here. Try maybe form a breakaway pack. This is almost very similar to cycling in terms of just the packs that form because of the slipstream. And also just the, the constant overtaking. So we need to try and make this work. As Bolega slides our inside. I get that corner all wrong. Getting all out of shape. But we're still going to go up the inside of Bolega anyway. Just about. There we go. Nice move. Squirting it on the power on the exit. Here we go. Nice move. Keeping it in P2 nice and easy. We've got a few bikes behind us. Look at that train. 
Here we go. This is probably going to try and size up for a move up the inside, but I'm having absolutely none of it through here. I'm taking an early apex, shutting the door on any possible overtaking opportunity for anyone that's behind me. Being nice and aggressive. Dropping it a gear through this next right hander. Martin doing a good job. He's actually breaking away from us a little bit, so we need to try and uh, focus and try and catch him up through this next section. Nice bit of power through there. Getting on the power nice and early into the final corner now. We're going to try and complete lap one. Martin making a good breakaway. Can't let him get away. He's going to pick up some toe down this front straight. And we've, I've actually done a pretty good job of getting somewhat close to him. And I should pick up a little bit of toe on this back straight. Or should I say main straight into turn one. So let's wait and see what happens. I think I've got a little bit of toe. Nothing major but enough to keep me also um, from being under attack from the guys from behind. If we go into turn one to start lap two. On the brakes, slow the bike down, get the apex. There we go, on the power nice and early. I take a very different line to what the uh, AI riders take through here. So maybe it benefits me because I was the fastest in here in qualifying by a country mile. As we get a good run through there, I'm flat out through there. I get a much better earlier power and flat out through turn three. Right on the back of Martin now, open up a gap to the guys behind. And now it's a question of just waiting for the moment to strike. Like a shark, I want to try and get past him straight away. The pace is pretty good so far, so... Uh, we just got to keep it in there. As we now got the inside, wasn't planning to, but Martin just missed the apex a bit. And we've made a beautiful move up into the lead of the race. So now we can try and pull away a breakaway of our own and see how well we can do. Okay, Martin's there. Martin's made the move. So Martin retakes the lead of the race. I've got a much better run through there that I'm going to go sort of around the outside. Oh, that was close. That was very close. I'm on the grass. I've taken a poor line through there. Martin making the move stick and... Um, I've got a one second penalty for my troubles for cutting that corner a bit. So that's something to take into account in the race because a second is a lot on these bikes. So um, there we go. Oh, lovely move up the inside. What a move that was. Get it all slowed down for this next one. Come on, let's try and get on the power. Martin, though, still not done with me yet. Back up the inside I go. Constant switching back between the two of us here. Let's try and pick up this uh, corner. Let's pick up the apex. Get on the power nice and early. Open up a gap to Martin behind us as we go into the final corner now to end lap two I'm gonna try and have a nice exit through here onto the pit straight oh I've actually run way too wide got, got the power on way too early and uh, that's gonna cost me a little bit of time but lucky I didn't fall off so just gotta keep it going now as we start lap three and let's see how long we can stay ahead of these guys we need to open up a second gap which is a major gap in these bikes so I don't know how I'm gonna do it I didn't think it was possible, but I think I've almost managed to break away from the pack. I've got a 9 tenth gap over the bike behind. Maybe a little bit more now as we cross the line. But um, I, I might just be okay with that one second penalty. I've never been able to um, break away from a pack. I've never really seen it that often in this game in a Moto3 bike. But the pace has been good. And I've got to say, that, lap, that last lap for me was absolutely perfect. Every single corner was absolutely perfect. And here we go across the line. See what the gap is to the bike behind. It's 7 tenths. So we need a little bit more in this last couple of laps to try and uh, get the gap that we need but so far things are looking pretty decent we're sort of breaking away we're just breaking the slipstream barrier which is crucial for us i'm really on the limit right now really on the ragged edge really pushing this bike which does suffer in a straight line to its absolute limit oh getting all out on the astroturf there not ideal but um luckily i didn't fall off as we now go into this section i'm currently i'm actually over a second above these guys when i cross the start finish line as i'm skidding the rear tire now I'm 9 tenths, so they've caught up a bit in the, in the first sector. Or sorry, I say the second sector, sorry. But um, just a question of keeping it going. I've got the gap in the first sector, so we just need to keep pushing hard. And in the first sector, the time will come by itself. I've lost a little bit of time through there, a little bit too wide through there. But um, still got a good gap to these guys. we just got to try keep pushing with one and a half laps to go. Here we go then on to the last lap of the race. These guys are going to try and make a move on me at the inside of turn one. I'm going to try and keep it nice and tight on the apex. As tight as I can anyway, I've got a bike up my inside. And we're going to try and make a move anyway. Try and be nice and aggressive here. Up the inside of Canet. Can't really pull it off. I'm going to get a good exit though. Oh, that was so close. Almost got my nose taken away there. But we've made the move back up into the lead. I need a big final lap. I need to nail every single corner to try and get that one second gap. And Canet is not enabling me to do that as he goes up my inside. So uh, this could be a real challenge here. Come on. Let's have it. I'm ready for a challenge. Mir and Anthony now get past. So I'm losing positions now. Left, right and centre. And that one second penalty is going to really hurt me at the end of the race. If I don't pick up the pace. So uh, 
Oh, that's so close. I got such a good run through there. And I almost took Mir out with me. Come on, let's try and keep it going here. I need to really have a big final sector here. Final end of the lap. Even though he's breaking away with this pack. If I can get inside the top 10 coming into the race, that'd be fantastic. So, uh, let's just try and keep it going. Let's see how much time I can gain. We've got a uh, Mark VDS bike trying to make a move on me. Oh, come on. Please keep it going. Please keep it going. If the race has gone so well, I don't want it to all fall apart now on the last lap for me. Come on, let's try and keep it going. Here we go into the final corner for the final time. This race is going to try and pick up the traction on the exit. This is going to be a race to the finish. I don't know where I'm going to finish, but um, we've just got to try and get the power down. Here we go. It's going to be a drag race. We've got Migno on the inside here. Trying to pick up some toe, get him across the line. There we go. That's the end of the race. And uh, that one second penalty, I wonder how far it's going to push us down the field. But like I said, these bikes race so close on the field. And um, it can hurt you. And there you go, P9. So uh, not too shabby there. We only lost a little bit of time. So not too bad. We had enough of a gap to the guys behind to not lose major time. So P9 in our debut race in MotoGP. We did start on pole. But, um, you know, we... We just don't have the pace in the race compared to qualifying, as you saw some of the Rebel rookies. But um, nevertheless, that was the first race, and we're now going to move into the second race of the season. Okay, so here we are then, round two of the season in Argentina, Termas del Rio Ondo. And uh, let's see how this track suits us. And uh, it's a track that I actually haven't raced before. I, I did a few laps in time trial one, so I'm going to have to do a few laps before I to learn this and then eventually start cranking up the pace. I'm going to go out early, do a few laps. I won't show them to you guys because I'm probably going really slow, but um, I've got 40 minutes, so hopefully by the end of the session we'll be somewhat on the pace. I did a few laps in time trial, like I said before, a couple of days ago with a Moto free bike, but I need to reacquaint myself to the circuit and really find the uh, edge and try to find an overall pace around here. Okay, so I found a bit of pace. I'm currently the 10th up in the first sector. This is going to be the lap that I make count. I've uh, done a couple of laps, but um, I want to try and make this one count. I've done a few install laps, sort of in and out of pit lane, done a few setup changes. But this is going to be the one and only lap that counts. So this is the one that I've got to really now first time, if possible. So I've done a few session restarts as well, because the 40 minutes that I had wasn't enough. So I want to do another go and uh, try and get one in the bag. So I've had to do a restart because I want to get more time to practice. And uh, so far, this is the one that's coming together nicely for me. So here we go. Still up in turn three. Oh, sorry, T3, sector three. Can we try and pull off now in the final sector? The final sector is the one where I tend to lose a lot of time. So let's see if we can really push this final corner and be aggressive with it and uh, maximize. Oh, bring the nose back. Come on, let's bring it back. There we go. All right, let's try and take a nice early aggressive apex with the final corner across the line. And it's three tenths off the pace. P7, not too bad. I'm happy with that. That's the best lap I've been able to pull off. So um, I'm very happy with that lap. So I think I'm going to take that. And I think that'll do for qualifying because I don't think I'm going to get a lot more out of that. That was a almost perfect lap from, from what I can pull off around here. So, um, yep, I think we'll take that. Consuming we're using those assists, that's the best I can do. So that is going to be qualifying done and dusted. There we go, P7, not too shabby, I've got to say, Joan Mir this time on pole position, Aaron Canet who won the first race is second, so the usual guys are up the front end, but I'm doing wonders for Mahindra, because it's a bike that doesn't belong in the top half, as you can see, looking down the bottom of the table there, this bike should be well and truly down the bottom of the table, so I'm doing a pretty decent job of holding the bike up the front end of the field here, but um, hopefully we can have a good race tomorrow, I've got a feeling the race isn't going to go as great as qualifying, because the race pace tends to be not as good as qualifying, from what I've experienced in this game, so far so let's just wait and see what happens but nevertheless that was qualifying and we're now going to move into the race right then it's race day for the Termas Steel Rio Hondo in Argentina round two of the championship and we're starting from P7 like I showed you before on this beautiful red Mahindra Aspar pull and bear bike and um, now the question is how well can we perform in this race can we try and follow up from our result last time out obviously P9 in Qatar not too shabby if you miss it as a card in the top right corner of your screen but um, let's see if we can try and at least improve that result I want to try and my aim this race is to finish in the position that I started so P7 is the aim this race because uh, last time I lost too many positions for the position that I started from so um, I want to try and uh, finish where I started so let's just see how things shape up. Without further ado, let's jump right into the race for round two of the season in the Moto3 World Championship. All the riders on the grid at Termas de Rio Ando. Concentration at a high because this running of the Argentinian Grand Prix will start any moment now. Right, here we go. Round two of the season for Moto3 in Argentina. Four red lights and it's lights out and away we go. 
for round two. Let's try and have a good start and see how we get on into the first corner. We're going to cut across the guys here and try and be nice and uh, aggressive into the first corner. I want to try and uh, get up into the front pack and try and see how I can hang there. Because I know I'm going to drop off inevitably at the end because uh, of my tires and just my bike pace. Overall, it's going to drop off. But so far, I'm up into P6, which isn't too shabby. We're going to get up the inside of McPhee here. And also, maybe uh, this guy, Kane, can we get past him? The race winner last time out. And then run it flat out through here. Oh, yes. Beautiful stuff. Nice move. Nice move. Getting past it up into P4. And now we've got a massive toe on this back straight behind Belega. And also, I believe that's uh, Mir. Uh, let's see what happens into the braking zone here. This could be pretty tasty. I'm going to try and pull it down for the brakes. McPhee makes a move on me, though. Getting past me beautifully. I'm just going to hang it behind these guys. Getting tucked in here behind Martin, I believe that might be. And uh, get on the power quite nicely. Behind McPhee. Let's see if we can uh, slide past him anytime soon. We've got a nice inside line. Oh, it's just so, so close. So close wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. Let's try and go nice and deep on the brakes into this corner. Use the gearing and also bump McPhee for just extra cornering. Getting a bit of traction on the exit here. Nice bit of traction, actually. We're going to maybe line up Martin for a move into this next corner. Down a gear. Up the inside. There we go. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. This is going really, really well so far. Let's try and keep it going. We've got Belega up in front. He's got a step behind him. Belega and Mir are the two guys leading up front. Let's just try and keep it going here. Nice first lap so far. Really good opening first lap. I've actually gained quite a few places, which is something that I didn't expect as now. All these guys start up my inside very aggressively, getting full start and hung out to dry as Fanati makes a really good dive bomb. Sliding back up the inside of him. I was thinking about it, but I just couldn't pull it off. Back down to P5 momentarily. McPhee making a good move into P3. Let's see if we can uh, have a good run through turn one here. Use the gearing. Oh, that's so close. A little bit of contact with Fanati. I've caught onto his wheel, so that's going to cost a bit of time. Just got stuck onto his rear tyre, but uh, we're still okay in P6. Not too shabby. Just got to try and keep it going here. Not lose our focus. Stay concentrated. Just keep it going. Kane and uh, Wotu making a move, but I'm going to keep on going. Go flat out through this next corner. Oh, I'm onto the grass. Oh, the bike's kicking up off the ground. That uh, could have been a very nasty crash, but we've just about kept it going. We're going to try and tackle this and sit stream here. We've got, uh, who's this? We've got Martin making a move. Antonelli as well on the KTM making a move. We're going to go nice and late on the brakes. Get a second by the cherry up the inside. Slow it all down. There we go. Lovely stuff. Fighting these guys really hard here. Still in P6. Maintaining with the lead pack, which is what I wanted. I had to stay with the lead pack. That's the aim. Because the longer you stay with them, the better chance you've got to finish in the higher position. So uh, we need to try and stick with this lead pack as long as possible. Bring it down now. A couple of gears. Get on the power nicely there. Beautiful. Good run through here. Flat out. Let's try and prepare the next corner. I love this sort of section here. This uh, cambered section of left, right, left. Nice, nice, nice. Nice speed through there. Antonelli absolutely pulls off a beautiful move for getting past me there. Absolutely mugged me off and left me for dead going around the outside. But I'm going to pick up a nice bit of toe on him. And let's see if we can make a move back up the inside of turn one. Nice and late on the brakes. Nice, nice, nice move there. Running nice and tight to the curb. Come on, let's try and keep it going here. Just keep running the car. Sorry, the bike. I keep saying car. Obviously, so many years of playing F1. It's just um, a bad habit I've gotten into. But so far, so good. Let's try and get a good run through here. A good run through here could put us on the back of these guys. Not too bad. Pretty close to Mick Fiat. I can see his name tag. So we should have a bit of toe, I'm going to guess. He's going to drop out of toe momentarily. So I should get some slipstream. Let's see how this goes. We've got the gap to the guys behind. So um, things are looking good. As we go into the braking zone, let's see who breaks the latest. Antonelli's having a look. He's sizing me up. I'm having none of it. Matching him on the brakes. On the power the earliest out of anybody. He's going to try and go around my outside, but I'm going to try and just cover him just about. And there we go. We're still in P6. So doing a good job of keeping this going midway now. Half race distance pretty much. And uh, things are looking still pretty decent. The pack at the front is starting to separate a little bit, which is not ideal. But if we can just keep up with them. Those three are having a bit of a scrap up ahead. So it's good for us because they're going to lose a bit of time. So I just need to try and stick with them, at least visually, so I can see their name tag. That's a good reference point. Nice run through there. Going to gain a nice bit of time. Keeping it going through here, running run nice and tight, like the line I sort of like to take through here. Up into fifth, right about now. 
Okay, we're doing pretty good here. Now it's a question of being aggressive into this breaking zone. As late as he dare, I can feel the bike slipping away from me, wanting to fall. He just basically wants to force me off and make me fall off the bike, but I'm keeping it going. And uh, we've been nice and aggressive through there. Still holding P6 beautifully. Like I said, my target is to finish in P7, so you just got to keep this going. And that would be a good race for us, so uh, let's bring the nose down for the bike here for turn 1. Antonelli's sizing me up up the inside. He's going to make a move also. Martin making a move here. Let's just try and keep this going. We're going to go back up the inside of Antonelli, I think, into this next corner. I, I seem to have a nice bit of speed here compared to the AI, so getting on the power nice and early. Antonelli makes a move. I'm going to go around the outside. Oh, it's just too much to pull off there. Too much to ask. Antonelli and Martin pull off the double overtake. I'm going to just tuck in for some slipstream. Look at the speed difference Martin has on me. Look at the speed in that bike. Either way, we're still into mass slipstream. Going to wait for the opportunity and go up the inside on the brace if possible. Nice and late. Use the gears to pull the bike down. I've had a nice run through there. Antony's had a pretty good exit to be fair, so I'm just going to have to sit behind him for now. P8 is still a respectable position. We've got a bit of a gap to the guys behind, so that's the main thing keeping the gap to the guys behind. I want to try and hold and maybe try and finish in the side of the top 10 again for the second race in a row on this bike, which is clearly much more worse and far inferior than the, than the bikes that I'm racing. So um, doing a good job here of holding this now as we come to the end of lap four pretty much now. Antonelli and Martin really going at it up ahead here. These two really getting into a proper tasty scrap. I'm just sitting behind waiting for the opportunity. But now nah, this could be a good chance. If I get a good run through here, this could be a good opportunity. And uh, I've had a pretty nice run through there. Just got to wait for the toe. Pick up some slipstream. See what these guys do into the braking zone. But I've got the run on these guys. I think I've got a bit more momentum than them. And uh, it's a question of uh, waiting to see what happens in the braking zone. Antonelli's going to obviously try and go up the inside of Martin. I'm just going to sit behind. Wait to see what happens. Use the gearing to get me slowed down. I've almost just fell off the bike there. That was very close. I thought the, the controller vibrating like mad in my hands. But uh, there we go. Antonelli is still behind Martin. So Martin defending beautifully from him. I've got the gap to, uh, I believe that's um, Loy behind who I was battling at Qatar. So um, good gap there so far. That's healthy enough as we've only got one more lap to go. So just got to try and keep this going here. These two still going at it. Hammer and tongs. I mean, look at them. I'm skidding the rear tire. I'm trying to drift the bike. And uh, get as much grip as I can. So I've got inferior performance with this machine. But uh, I'm doing a brilliant good job in this Mahindra to try and keep it in P8. But I think it will be still hard with one lap to go. Because I'm losing a bit of time now. I think the tyres might be starting to hit a bit of a second phase. And also just starting to generally go off. Because I'm running the soft on the front and the soft on the rear. And here comes now. I think that's Loy. Here he comes in the Leopard bike. Which is one of the best bikes on the grid. And also Bastianini as well. Let's try and slide back underneath these two. Oh, I almost fell off there. That was so, so close. I literally, I felt the handlebar just scrape the ground. I was so close, but a beautiful double overtake holding on to P8 here. I think I wanted P7. That's out of the question now. I'm not going to be able to pull that one off. So if I can just stay inside the top 10, that would be great. So let's just try and hold it now for one more lap around Turn Muscle Real Honda as uh, Bastian Indian gets a little bit faster with me there. And Loy uh, makes the most of it by getting past me also. The back end really starting to scrub now. That back, that back tile is really starting to drift as now we've got a bike up right inside. I think that might be Danilo, yeah. So Danilo making a move on me. And I'm starting to drop through the field now with positions. I think my tyres might be going a little bit. I might have gone for a compound too soft. So I'm struggling for grip overall around here, which is never a good thing. So um, let's just see if we can try and get into the slipstream with Danilo and make a move possibly under the brakes. It's going to be very unlikely because he's very far away. So let's see what happens into the braking zone. It's going to be nice and aggressive. Get that initial braking phase sorted out. Use him as a brake. There we go. Nice. Back up into the top 10, but he gets much better track. Look at the traction he's picked up there. I can feel my tyres just not working for me, like skidding like mad. Just not getting the traction I need. I'm probably a bit aggressive on the tyres anyway by myself, by nature. But I've just not got the grip that I want. I want to try and cover the inside. Not let anyone make a move. There's a, a very likely opportunity. I'm going to hold it. Bezecchi makes a move around the outside and I'm falling off across the line. And oh no, it's all gone wrong across the line. Disaster strikes and we've fallen over. I wonder if we finish inside the top 15 because 15th is points. So did we get a point? Yes, we did. We managed to get P15. So there you go. Across the line with a fall, we managed to get a point. So not too shabby there. But um, 
Wow, the tires really went at the end there. I've really struggled with the tires. I'm going to have to go for some harder compounds in future races. But, um, wow, that was a really tough race. But uh, hopefully we can have much better luck in the next race in uh, Austin, I believe. It might be Austin the next race. So that's a track I quite enjoy, one that I actually know. So hopefully we can have a better race around there. Looking at the Riders' Championship, Canet leading the way there. Pretty good job from him. Two in a row for him winning. And uh, we're down in P11 on, on eight points. So not too bad. But uh, we need to try and improve. I'm the top Mahindra, so I'm not too bad for my manufacturer. Doing the best I possibly can. And uh, in terms of the uh, constructors, then you can see obviously Mahindra in P3. Quite a bit away from KTM and Honda. So um, I think the other guys are going to have to try and pull their act together a bit to try and help us out here. But um, nevertheless, that was Thomas the Real Hondo. And we now move on to Kota.